Hi everyone, um, welcome back to the Working Spirit podcast. Today we're very excited to meet Paul, a Navy veteran who also did some fantastic work on our Working Spirit website. So good morning for Paul. Morning Karen. Okay, so where did you grow up? Okay, I grew up in uh, Adelaide in yeah. South Australia. And what made you start to look at a defence career? When I left school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I was interested in IT, so I sort of thought I'll either go programming or web yeah. design. Now I went down the web design path, did that for a few years, had moved into state uh, working for a company, then came back to Adelaide, got a tra- travel bug, went overseas for a couple of years. When I came back from overseas, I fell behind in my web design knowledge, forced me to get a job in travel, which I loved, but it was a lot of work for not much return. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to join the Air Force. So I thought, oh, why don't I go down and try out for for a job in defense? And yeah, I had an interview with an air marshal for my U session and don't know how he got onto Navy. I think there was more jobs for Navy than there was for Air Force. Having still had the travel bug a little bit, he said, well, Navy, you get to travel more you'll get qualified quicker and you earn more money. Um, For me, I sort of thought, well, I like travel. I'm pretty poor compared to most (laughs) of my friends right now because I've spent a few years overseas. I haven't had a career yet. Maybe Navy would be the way to go. So then it was a matter of choosing between being a combat systems operator or a communication systems, information systems sailor. So I thought, well, you know, I've had experience in IT, so perhaps I'll go down the combat systems route, so, and the training was shorter. So they do six months training as opposed to 12 months. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, shorter training, get to sea quicker, get to the deployments quicker, yeah, essentially work my way up quicker. So that's, that's really what made me get into the combat system operator role. I did my initial training down at Cerberus, yeah. and... We had six months training over here at Garden Island. Then they told me I wouldn't go to sea for six months. And I think that was on the Friday that they told me that. And then on the Monday, I was on a ship. <laughs> right. So, uh, Quick I'd, turnaround. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I did, I did a couple of um, sea rides with a couple of ships. And then a position came up for a golf deployment, six-month golf deployment, uh, within the three weeks that I'd just been inducted into the Navy life, so I had to make the decision to, you know, go away, which I did. And how long was that deployment for? Uh, That was a six-month deployment over to uh, the Middle East Mm -hmm. area of operations on HMAS Toowoomba. Yeah, lots of challenges, good good crew, but yeah, definitely a lot of challenges going in as a junior sailor, not really knowing much. Did Uh, you have a great team of uh, supervisors? Uh, I had, it was sort of 50-50, uh, so I had a, we had an operations team, you know, we're split into two, port and starboard. We had a mixed group of personnel from all ranks, so some were more supportive than others, some there was personality clashes, so it was just a matter of focusing on the positive and not so much the negative and finding ways to get through the struggle, I guess, of being trapped on a boat with 180 other guys for six months. Yeah, for me, I found, you know, just making a few friends uh, within my watch and yep. getting into a routine, you know, going to the gym on off watch, um, making sure you get out and see the sun because working in an ops room environment is quite dark. You don't really see the sun much. And when you get to, like, day 17 of not seeing the sun... Um, the mind can play tricks on you. So, yeah. yeah, it was just about reinforcing those healthy habits. Yeah. So healthy eating, um, getting to the gym, you know, all the resilience training that defence harp on about that um, actually does help. And also using the su- support on the ship. So we had a chaplain on board who was really good um, when we had, you know, sort of conflict within yeah. the ops room. It was just like, well, we've got a job to do. You've got to respect the rank. You know, he's telling you that because, you know, somebody else has told him to do that. So if you have a problem, just do what you're told and then go speak to the chaplain afterwards. So. And how old were you when you went? Uh, I, was, I was 27 going on 28. But I think because I'd 
lived overseas for a couple of years, um, worked as a web designer for a few years, worked in travel, done, sort of done my own thing. Had life experience. I had life experience. I was a bit set in my ways. Uh, so it was a bit... It was a bit of a different environment for me where I was like, well, you can't tell me what to do. But then it was like, well, hang on a second. We've got a job to do here. So, you know, don't take it personally. Just just get on with it. Um, and um, so. you mentioned some of the challenges, but what, what was the best thing about that deployment from your work uh, perspective? Look, I think the best thing about it was being able to, you know, be part of something bigger than myself. You know, we're sort of brought up in this society to have the best career or make the most money. And no one really focuses on the bigger picture. I think for me it was about, you know, sort of leaving my ego or leaving myself, you know, not thinking about me, me, me all the time and trying to be part of a team and be part of something bigger than myself. So That's a really good um, positive way of looking at it considering, you know, you're brand new out of category training and then put on a boat with 180 something... 180 odd, yeah. ...people. And yes, then ha- new to the trade and having to learn how to live with people and you've had that life experience and yeah that would have been a massive challenge but I guess the resilience as you said from the defense force and the training yeah look they do you sort of understand it more you don't understand when they when you're going through the training but as time goes on you sort of realize all right this all has a purpose you know to fulfill the mission or or whatever it is but um I think that yeah the hardest thing was just not being selfish, you know, not being like, oh, I don't want to do this or this is too hard, you know, trying to leave that and say, well, this is important because we're all trying to achieve something here. Yeah. So instead of having a bad attitude or taking the negative um, outlook on everything, how about you look at ways and how to get through it? And I, yeah, I sort of felt like that's what the golf trip was all about. For me, anyway, just sort of learning how to work with other people that you're not usually (coughs) used to working with. Defence kind of brings everyone everyone from all walks of life together. Yeah, and you've got Um, to work together. And yeah, you've got to work together. You know, like you have a bad day with someone in the office, you just, you go home and you don't worry about it. But I think in the Defence Force, if you have a bad day with someone, you might have to go back to the cabin and share a room with them and then... You, you sort of don't have that escape, so yeah. you really have to deal with those interpersonal skills a lot. You've got to work on those a lot um, quicker. A lot than quicker. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So. And how many years have you done? Uh, did you do in the navy? I uh, did eight, eight, almost eight years, I think. So I joined in May 2010 and discharged in January 2018. And how did you find the transition process? Uh, look, it's been it's been challenging. I think I sort of had this idea of what transitioning would be like. I thought given that I'd been in a government department for almost eight years, I thought it would be quite easy to transition into another government department. But I think my experience has been the opposite. It's really been a bit of a highlight that there's not many transferable skills from being a combat system operator that is clear on paper yeah I've sort of I've been active actively applying even though I've sort of had my own freelance business keeping me going I've I've been actively applying for jobs since December and I think once you get to about the 20th rejection letter you start realizing I wonder what what it is that you know these companies are not liking about me do you think it's because you've they don't understand maybe what a combat systems operator is. What, yeah. what would you call that in a civilian role? Yeah, look, I think, role? I think that's from the feedback that I got because I went and saw a couple of uh, recruitment agencies as yeah. well. So I thought, I think it got to about April and I was just like, look, this isn't working. Uh, I need to go seek some civilian um, advice. Yeah, I did see Robert Half recruiting and Randstad recruiting uh, and they gave me a few tips on how to change my resume into civilian talk yeah putting like highlighting your skills at the top of your resume um, trying to convert it into a language that possibly civilian companies would understand um, was successful for me Uh, I was able to get uh, an interview with Robert Half actually for a recruiting job and also through their advice get a opportunity for a front-end web developer role for a company in Perth. 
just those small tips there of rewording my resume, taking out a lot of the, you know, where where I was posted or what ship I was on. You know, like they don't really want to know all the career, you know, highlights of, you know, oh, I did a round the Australia trip and then I did a golf deployment. I mean, that's all good. Shows that you uh, can commit yourself to yeah. a job, but you really need to sort of highlight the skills that you have within that time that you spent for that posting. So that posting could be just a one-liner and then you just highlight skills under that, like work well with others, you know, interpersonal skills, working well with others, work within a small team to achieve a task and whatever the task was. Do you think there's a need for maybe companies to look at volunteering some mentors to have a look at veterans' resumes? Uh, Yeah, look, I think it would be definitely helpful to veterans to... Even I mean, Defence provide a service as part of your transitioning yes, for resume yeah, writing, yeah. and I did take I did do that three day course, um, and they do have a career practitioner that will help you build a resume. Mm-hmm. But they're all very gen- generic, um, and I think from my experience, I've found that there's a lot of applicants in the market now. So when you're applying for a job, you're competing with you know maybe 100 to 300 other people. If you're going through Seek. You know, you need to hone in on the job application of what they're looking for, like what job skills they need. And if you're not highlighting that in your cover letter or your resume, then it's not going to get shortlisted. And then if you're not going to get shortlisted, you're just going to keep getting those rejection letters. So it's about really spending that time going through the job application and saying, all right, well, they're looking for this. How am I using those keywords on my resume? Because if you don't, you're already out of selection because most of these recruiting companies or Seek or agencies are all using computer programs now that use algorithms to scan for keywords that they're looking for and then they shortlist based on that. They don't necessarily spend much time reading, reading your, your, resume. your resume or your cover letter. And I think a lot of defence people still think that happens. Yeah. I mean, I know I think that still happens. Yeah. There is the companies here with the algorithms and then... Um, yeah, look, I'm not saying they're all like that. But I think the hardest thing for me is trying to say it's not me. It's just not what they're looking for. Do you think, um, um, well, Working Spirit works with a couple of companies that their process is initially to sit down with the veteran and mm. in an informal setting. It's kind of like a job interview, so to speak, but more of a one-on-one information session saying, well, what, what would you like to do if you went into mining or administration or banking? Mm. What would you like to do within this company? And we're finding quite a bit of success With that, um, with veterans getting hired more Mm. so than the corporate job interview, how would you find if something like that was available to veterans, more companies sort of coming on board that way and really understanding, I guess, Mm. where you could say, you know, in front of somebody, a combat system operator would be equivalent to this in the civilian sector and by that I would mean it's giving you a chance to Yeah, look, I think, think, yeah, you just need to open those um, channels of communication. So... That's why organisations like Working Spirit are good because you're trying to get companies interested in networking with veterans to try to bridge that gap between what I think is kind of missing in the the civilian workplace, I guess. Or, yeah, I I mean, I sort of, I was lucky I got, I did get an opportunity with a front-end web developing company. However, I didn't have the skills required for the role that they wanted me to slot into. Yeah. Um, so it was a real kind of reflection on me. It was like, well, it's not that I'm not good at what I do. It's just I don't do it the way that they do it. And they needed me to step into a senior role. And even though I had the attitude, you know, and I could get my foot in the door, without the skills required, it yeah. was very difficult to take on that stress as well as sort of doing my own little business on the side. Um, so I had to make that decision of, well, you know, what's more important? And then, you know, you sort of go, well, you know, there's a conflict of interest here, but like I want to I wanna be the best that I can for this new company and I want to be able to fill in those shoes. But without the support there, um, there was like he was going on, on leave. So it was like, well, this guy's going on leave. We need you to do this. Can you start Monday? You know, and I was sort of hesitant in the fact that I was like yes I can but you know if you do it that way I need you to I need you to get him to sit down with me and really 
guide me through the process because if I once he goes, who's going to support me to yeah. to be able to be up to a standard that you need? So I think if companies are having that conversation with veterans, then we're happy to have that conversation. But yeah, there just needs to be. I think we're 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 used to a structured environment where if there's if there's not that structure that of support there, I guess, or that clear pathway or something written in, on paper, like a contract of some sort, you're sort of going to lose a lot of veterans because they're kind of like, well, what am I doing here? Like, you know, there's a bit of doubt. I like to have things on paper and say, well, this is this is how long we expect this project to be finished. This is what we're going to going to do and this is how much it's going to cost um, defense and, yeah defense personnel definitely like yeah so well, most defense personnel yeah <laughs> so my experience working for this company was the opposite it was like well here's a project we want to test to see how long it takes you but there was no sort of clear you know they said oh we'll get you on for three months if you're successful at completing this project but I think within two weeks I was like I've spent so much time on this and I don't even know what I'm working towards here because you'd given no clear direction at the start. Yeah, there was no... So I, I think my message there is don't be too over keen. Like, it's good to be keen and, and present yeah. yourself as well, but don't forget the ground rules, as in, you know, like, you should always have things in writing. <coughs> you should always, whenever you enter an agreement with a company or a person, you know, there should always be a written contract or something, a clear pathway Otherwise, you're going to be quite disappointed. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, for me, it really took took a lot out of me, that experience, but it also taught me a lot about myself and it made me realise, you know, like, like I really need to start either considering a plan B, putting more effort into getting those skills or just honing in on the skills that I do have, you know, instead yeah. of trying to be everything. You know, trying to be what they're doing and trying to be what he's doing. Why don't I just be what I'm good at, you know, and market myself towards towards that? I think we just kind of get caught up in the... I think for me it was more like I, I was missing that team environment and I really just wanted to get in with someone to yeah, be in that team, team environment. Again. And then I realised that's not really what I wanted and then I had to really reassess and go, well, you know, I want the team environment but I don't want the stress of the senior role... Yeah. Without the support, it yeah. was a, yeah, it was it was a difficult situation. And I think if I, I, I'm glad that I went through it, but it was it was quite difficult at the uh, time. At the time, yeah. So tell us a bit about your web business. Okay. What's the name of it? What do you do? Yeah. Well, who you've helped? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the business name is Paul Dixon Design. Uh, so it was started in 2005. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so. So yeah, I, I finished my diploma in multimedia in 2003. Uh, then I got my first junior web design role in 2004 in Brisbane. Uh, I worked up there for about six months and uh, for a contractor who worked for Telstra, doing all their marketing material. So that was really good. Break away from Adelaide, nicer weather in Queensland for almost a year. Um, but then I moved back to Adelaide because I was missing the family and spent a couple of years back in Adelaide just working some freelance jobs and managed to build up the business to a stage where I had to make a decision about whether I was going to get my own office and yep. start employing people <laughs> or, um, you know, what I was going to do next. And I think, I think I sort of wanted to, I had a bit of a itch to go overseas and travel and see the world and not lock myself down too young because uh, I was only early 20s at this stage uh, so yeah I ended up kind of going overseas coming back but like I said earlier losing those skills that would allow me to continue that career and when I got knocked back for a web design position in 2008 I decided to go into flight center and work for flight center um, so I did that for yeah almost two years and as a sales consultant um, built up a big client base and I was still freelancing a little bit but not yeah. not not enough to warrant a career in web design so uh, and since you've gotten out you've yeah. worked on some businesses 
Yeah, since getting since getting out, I've worked on a security cameras website, Zito Plastic Passion Records website. Uh, I've also done some a couple of mining companies, so probably done about three e-commerce sites. But yeah, I, I think being self-employed has its challenges. It, I don't think uh, it was my transitioning intention to go full time with my business. Um, but based on my experience applying for jobs, I've found I'm focusing more on my business, mm-hmm. um, which is good. I think the hardest thing has probably just been going from a steady job um, to, yeah, to, to the bit of the unknown to a bit of the unknown <laughs> and contract and just sort of living from paycheck to paycheck so it's hard um, when you've come out of that defense environment where you yeah. get pay every fortnight and yeah you don't have to worry about medical or dental or anything like that yeah so I, i've never really been good at the business side of things so you know invoicing quoting um contracts, sales, you know, like I can do all that, but I don't really... So there, there could be an avenue for companies maybe that could jump on board and give some advice to veterans that may be wanting to look at their own business? Yeah. Or have you used the WA business? Yeah, look, I know the government's bringing in a lot more incentives now for mm-hmm. small business, um, which is good. Um, and I've, I've tried to start actively engaging more front-end developers and in Perth yeah. um, and networking to get that community going because you know like there's a lot more other people in the same boat but yeah if anyone's looking at a, a as a career in web design i would say definitely know what your strengths and weaknesses are because Please. you know if, if you find yourself relying on that as a full-time income uh, and you can't <laughs> produce you know the latest code that a company needs and you've spent two weeks on that project well, guess what? <laughs> You're not going to get paid for that project. And if that's your rent, then um, yeah, that puts a lot of financial <coughs> stress on you. Yeah, it can affect people around you. So I think for me, it's it's been a real kind of journey um, because, I mean, I'd been working myself up to this point from 2013 with the business, doing a few websites here and there as a, as a you know, second business yep. on top of the Navy. And it was fun doing that because I was helping people and providing a affordable service for them. Whereas now I've had to treat it a little bit more seriously and it's it's still fun, but I think sometimes it can be yeah, very challenging when it when things aren't working or if they are working that's great. But yeah, when things go wrong, they really do go wrong. <laughs> yeah. So it's just about managing those stress levels and, you know, knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are and, uh, yeah, trying to zone in on what your strengths yeah. are. Don't be afraid to say, look, I can't, I can't do that, but I'll give it my best go. And don't be afraid to take on things that you can do. You know, if you can do something, go, yes, I can do that. And I've been successful doing it in these areas. So yeah, don't always be so hard on yourself. I think is what I'm trying to say. Like yeah. I, I'm, you're definitely your worst enemy when it when you transition out of defence because it's just you on your own, you know. And if things aren't working out, guess who's going to get the most angry at you yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, you've given some very good advice. What transition advice would you give to anyone listening today that might be looking at getting out of the military, say in six to twelve months' time? Um, just just have a clear plan definitely um, you know look at your finances make sure that you're prepared to go without if things don't go your way yeah just be prepared for what your expectations are you know try not to get angry Um, I know it's easier said than done but try not to take things personally try not get angry at people or organizations because they don't understand you or they haven't given you the opportunity or try to be a bit open with with people you know and realize that we're all human Um, we all have needs and wants you know life is a struggle it's all about finding what you're happy to struggle with and if you can find problems that you like solving then that's going to bring you joy and fulfillment within your life Um, so I think good advice yeah I think yeah, try not, try not have a, a sense of entitlement. You know, oh, I've been in defence, I'm entitled to this. You know, get that out of your head, you know, because 
yeah, that's 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 one thing that you shouldn't carry yeah. um, through your transition. <coughs> um, but yeah, also don't be hard on yourself. Realize you're going to make mistakes, and it's okay to be happy. It's so it's okay to be sad. Yeah. You know, if you're really struggling. Yeah. You know, and you have a really bad day, that's okay. Yeah. And there is support. The court, yeah, Veterans um, Counselling Service. Yes. It's fantastic yep. here in WA. Um, so Geron do some counselling here at the RSL. Yeah. Um, so there are some great um, organisations yep. out there. And as soon as you ask for help, you'd be amazed at how many people are willing to help you. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, if you bottle everything up and be a hermit and push everyone out of your life, you will get to a point where it'll just it'll get too much Um, yeah and you'll just have a breakdown so Mm -hmm. just yeah just be open and honest with yourself realize you're going to go through emotions you're not going to have that support that defense give you and you're going to lose your identity as well so you know you're not going to be leading semen dixon or you're not yeah you just got to be prepared for a lot of things some of the challenges um, challenges yeah yeah. but yeah it's all about self-discovery and what your place is in the world again that's so. fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. On a positive note, I'd yes. like to get your company out there. How do people yeah. reach you if they're looking at wanting to, a veteran maybe wanting to go into small business or maybe working for a company that's looking for a new website? How do they reach you? Yeah, uh, they can reach me through my website, which is www.pddesign.com.au. Uh, now, I don't have a phone number on there because I get a lot of, marketers calling me when I yep. put my phone number up so if you'd like to call me on the telephone uh, just send me an email and I'll send you my mobile telephone number if not if you like email um, then yeah just get on the email send me a quote request or contact form and yeah we can organize a time to catch up for coffee and discuss what your plans are I can tell you what what will work what won't work I'll share some experiences of transitioning and yeah, I can give you advice there as well. No, yes. no, that's great. And Paul, um, as I said at the start, has done our Working Spirit website and looks fantastic. Um, when I met Paul, um, we went through a couple of different other sites to have a look at to get a clear vision of what we wanted to achieve. And then it's been working really well. So um, mm. thank you for your help. And I think I've also put you on to another a RAF officer who's doing a little um, side project, um, yes, correct. releasing a book. Yes, so she's yes, very happy you. as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank so you. Yeah, again, if anyone um, is looking for a web design or wanting to improve their small business, www.pddesign.com.au. Yeah. And thank you, Paul, for coming in today. And thank you so much for your insights. It's been very valuable and I've, I've really enjoyed listening to you. And I hope You at home, uh, enjoy listening to Paul as well. So thank you, everyone, for your time. This podcast was edited, published and produced by the RSLWA. Head to www.rslwa.org.au for other content. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook.